Okay, so this is the Harman Kardon Citation 200. I've had these speakers, I've got two of them. Uh, I've had them for about three months. Great sounding little speakers. Uh, and I'm very curious, I was very curious as to what they look like underneath their covers. Um, as well as it's now confirmed they've got two base radiators one on either side it's a 12 centimeter woofer and a one inch round about an inch dome tweeter it's a very conventional design as far as a little bookshelf goes except for these uh, base radiators on the side they're about uh, six centimeters by ten centimeters each and other than that it's a sealed enclosure and at the back here, I'm assuming this is the microphone because these are obviously your smart speakers. Um, so quite a mission to take these covers off if you don't know the trick. And the trick is basically they've got three little screws at the bottom. One there, one there, one there. And you access those screws by peeling this bottom rubber away and you'll get the screw access there one there and then one there and then they basically stick they they plugged on or forced on with little rubber grommets over locating pins and etc so once you've loosened the screws you use a some sort of prying tool uh, something like that and you sort of force them out and you've got to pull pull it pull pull start on one side pull it out start on the other side pull it out and it comes off it's quite a fiddle true to Harman and Carden's uh, quality construction uh, ensuring no rattles and etc interesting patterns on the inside of the grill um, so that satisfied my curiosity. I was not certain whether there were whether there was just one base radiator or two. There's no other pictures on the internet to indicate whether it is or not. So here we go. Two base radiators. Now the main point of this for me taking it apart apart from sheer curiosity is I want to the, the, the sound of these speakers is great, got them in stereo, sounds great and whatnot, but they are still Bluetooth speakers, and Bluetooth, no matter how good it is, high res at the moment, what they call high res, and these are also wireless speakers, so they stream directly from Spotify, I can't link, the, the, these speakers work on uh, Google Home app, unfortunately, I wish it was just a straight Bluetooth speaker, it would be a lot simpler, it's a pain in the ass to set up, and portability is an issue, you got to set them up uh, to wherever the new Wi-Fi network is that you that you're using, unless you make hotspot with your mobile phone or, or tablet or whatever. But it is a pain in the ass, and they're also always listening. Um, you do have a mic a mic um, deactivate here, so Google won't listen. But can we really trust these buttons? I don't know. Anyway, the point of this is what I would like to do with these speakers because they would make. There's nothing wrong with the tweeter, nothing wrong with the woofer, nothing wrong with the, the build construction. It's just that the limited uh, sound quality that you get over wireless and um, uh, Bluetooth, uh, it, 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 comes, it, it doesn't come anywhere close to a normal desktop hi-fi run through a nice NAD with some nice decent cables going into a nice binding post at the back and boom you've got your good old-fashioned stereo bluetooth still lacks uh, drastically in that department in terms of proper hi-fi sound quality uh, said to improve in 2024 2025 with a couple of improved uh, codecs basically they're talking about five times the resolution potential uh, but that's going to take time and these speakers i don't think are future proofed in that way so basically what my idea is, what I'd like to do, is turn these into hybrid speakers. Um, turn them into bookshelf speakers. So basically to bypass all the circuitry inside and just have a 
uh, speaker jack at the back here that I can connect to my NAD amplifier and have them uh, standard. Now I know that's a tall order because the circuitry is built on to very small boards and whatever and to put jumpers in to break the circuit before after the the built-in amp and but before the built-in crossover and then bring binding posts I'll have to have two binding posts so that I can bridge them normally when I want it to work as a wireless speaker but then I'll have to unplug the bridge and plug in the speakers uh, and etc crossover is going to be a major nightmare with with this particular project so anyway let's open it up and see what the circuit board looks like and whether it would even be feasible to do but I love these speakers uh, they've got such a nice sound although through Bluetooth they do sound slightly less bright uh, in the upper mid-range and treble no shortage of bass uh, luckily you can adjust the bass and the treble bass you adjust by holding down the Bluetooth and then toggling through uh, the volume down button that will it starts default for four line you know but full bass and then when you toggle through it it goes down to one bass two bass three bass four bass in strength likewise for the treble treble you adjust by holding down the bluetooth button and then toggling through with the volume up button that takes the bass up and down treble up and down not quite as cool as just dedicated knobs like um, Marshall amps have or Marshall speakers they're great I wish that we had a uh, bass adjustment on the Harman and Kardon Go Play because that thing is very bass heavy and it's got no adjustment. But anyway, it's another story. So I'm going to take this speaker out. I think it's going to be the easiest way to access inside here, although this top can also come off um, there with these screws. But I'm very curious to see what is looking like inside this speaker magnet. So let us see what size magnet this thing's rocking. Um, so let me remove that quickly. All right, that's the base driver removed. Um, a quick look inside here. Uh, well, let me get a light on first. Let's look at the woofer. Uh, no wonder this thing packs quite a quite a mean amount of base. It's a pretty hefty speaker pretty hefty speaker indeed for for its size um, I think these are rated at 50 watts or something uh, but anyway uh, you have to remove the connections they're very short so the speaker it's quite a fiddle once again to get the connections off but anyway there's your base base speaker Nice and chunky, I must say. Heavy. Nice looking speaker. So let's get some lights on inside there. Okay, lights. So inside, a bit hard to see. That's the inside of the enclosure. Uh, down there's your charge base because these things live on docking stations um, and uh, you get more power out of them when they are running on the docking station extra couple of watts um, I think they're about 60 watt 60 watt charges uh, so that's that so I'm going to need to to get to this control board I'm going to need to take this top part off. So let's get those screws out and remove the top. Yeah, they've been very sneaky. Once you've taken all the top screws out that are holding this control top panel, uh, it's held on by that little piece of plastic still, and that little piece of plastic, which is part of the protection grill of your uh, base radiators, your passive radiators. So, I'm um, going to have to 
I think just take these two top screws out and then this should bend, it's a bit flexible. So pull that apart and then this top will be able to slide. Just this little piece here, busy holding it on. Ish. Right here, so I've removed those screws and that allows uh, this to bend, bend away which should be enough to remove this top. So I'll do that, get that top off and have a look inside the the control boards and amplifier circuits and etc. Alright, so it's a bit nerve-wracking, but anyway, uh, there's your amplifier heat sink and um, the main motherboard, I suppose you can call it. These things are like computers now. Um, basically, this is, let's see, there's a jumper that goes on there that's supplying power from the battery. There is this jumper over here supplying, I think this is from the AC, from the dock, docking station. Um, this is where the speakers connect to. So we'll throw in a tweeter. Speaking of the tweet speakers, there's a little tweeter in there little dome tweeter and then there's this sort of grill below uh, the heat sink and etc which I suppose is like a SPF diffuser of some kind I don't know but yeah doing that modification is going to be a, a nightmare I mean I can bypass what I'll have to do is I have to put my own crossover in there and then I'll just cut these speaker cables, run them to jacks at the back, um, but I would need to, it's going to be complicated to get a crossover in here. I might be able to get away with making that a full range, then all I'd need in the crossover circuit is a, a 10 microfarad um, a 10 microfarad capacitor to cut the base out of this, the, the tweeter but it is a real risky thing these, since these speakers are expensive seven seven and a half thousand rand so but I'd really like to get I'd really like to hear what these things can sound like as hi-fi speakers not as Bluetooth or wireless uh, but anyway Satisfied my curiosity, having a look inside. Can you believe that? The, that's it. It's a 50 watt amplifier. Any tiny lightweight. This whole thing is now very light. This made up the majority of the weight of the speaker. It's a good kg and a bit, I'm sure, in there. So. Yeah, so I guess what I'm going to have to just do is get some decent pair of bookshelf speakers. I just accept that these are wireless with their limitations and etc. As far as wireless speakers go, they're not bad. They sound great in stereo. If you get two of them and you do a stereo pair, fantastic. But um, not quite as good as a good pair of, if these were just bookshelf speakers. Oh well, put it all back together again and hope that it works. That's the Harman Kardon Citation 200. The Citation range, I believe it's brought out as a sort of a commemoration in honor of one of the first uh, sort of audio, well first modern hi-fis that Harman and Carden brought out about half a century ago uh, it was called the Citation 12 if I'm not mistaken and uh, they've continued with the Citation name unfortunately Harman has been bought by Samsung so how that's going to change things in the future who knows but they've always been very good I've always enjoyed the Infinity speakers uh, JBLs obviously are also Harman. The old Infinity 
reference series uh, hi-fi uh, hi-fi speakers with the old um, Emmett K ribbon tweeters were fantastic beautiful speakers anyway let's put it back together again and get to doing something a bit more important okay so this is just a little bit of fun got it all back together again it's working he has a frequency generator these things are rated from 38 hertz 38 hertz and up so let's get it it's 35 it's actually doing 35 take it down to 26 yeah it's moving it's not really making any noticeable sound 26 Hertz 34 Hertz very noticeable boom or rumble so passive radiators you can't really oh there we go going quite nicely so yeah no leaks no rattles no horrible sounds all gone back together quite nicely so that's the story with the citation 200s for now